Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren and I make videos a couple of times a week about books and fandom things. So today I'm doing something a little bit different and I'm actually going to test four books. So I'm about to have a jaw surgery, so I'm about to have my jaw fixed. If you're not new here you know that for a while I've had issues with my jaw and I'm about to actually finally have surgery with it which is uh, was terrifying but also I'm happy but that it will finally have some work done to it. I am gonna be out of action for a while. I'm gonna be in the hospital and then when I come home, like I'm not gonna be able to talk because my jaw's gonna be shut. So I have bought some books to read and I actually might film a hospital TBR, which is something I've never done before, but I might do it. So I thought I would read the first chapter of all of these books because one of them I'm going to take into the hospital with me. I'm going to take other things into the hospital as well, but probably not as hard hitting as a big sci-fi fantasy or, or like sci-fi or fantasy book. So one of these will reach that top spot to be my main hospital book. But which book will it be? <laughs> Could it be The Psychology of Time Travel by Kate Mascarenas? This is something which sounds so interesting to me. I bought this the other day from Waterstones and I absolutely love the sound of it. I'm gonna read the blurbs of all of these books because like I said I got three of them quite recently so if I read the blurb it'll explain it better than me. 1967, four female scientists invent a time travel machine but then one of them suffers a public breakdown and puts the whole project in peril. 2017, Ruby knows her granny B was a scientist who went mad but they never talk about it and so they receive a message from the future warning of an elderly woman's violent death. 2018, Adette found the dead woman at work, shot in the head, door bolted from the inside. Now she can't get it out of her mind. Who was she and why is everyone determined to cover up her murder? I really like the sound of this. I really love the concept of time travel because so what I love seeing lots of different ways in which that is discovered but and like discussed because time travel like there'd have to be either a parallel universe or some kind of timeline that we could alter and jump into but also if there isn't one we couldn't go back any further than the day that time travel existed so if i invented time travel today you wouldn't be able to time travel part like before today because time travel didn't exist and it's insane and like a big thing to think about and gives me a bit of a headache sometimes but I really love exploring different books about time travel and different like films and stuff about time travel but to be honest I don't read it a lot even though it's something I find really interesting so when I saw this in Waterstones the other day I thought well I'm treating myself and buying some books to take into the hospital with me and things that sound interesting so this was one of them then we have a big boy which is Fall or Dodge in Hell by Neil Stevenson so it says in Fall or Dodge in Hell exists a world where we hold the keys to our own mortality where the limits of survival no longer exist and the potential to decide our fates lies in our corruptible hands from one of the greatest speculative writers of our time comes an epic saga of life and death power and technology and a future that isn't as far away as it seems again something i really really love i am obsessed with science and the futures of science and what technology can do and how it can change the world and we'll blame tony stark for that because ever since since i met jarvis i wanted one so like it's tony's fault for my interest in all of these things but this also sounded so interesting i really love that discussion of power and technology and the influence that it can have on us and what our future will be like not too long from now and if any of these things will actually be something which happens in our lifetime which i find really interesting so this is another one which i want to definitely want to get to this year but will it be my main hospital book will it be the book which sits on my hospital bedside while i'm having my jaw hacked to pieces <laughs> then we have a fantasy book and that is the city of brass by sa chakraborty and this is a book i've seen so many people on booktube talk about recently not even necessarily booktube like book twitter and uh, bookstagram like all over the place this book has been mentioned and it sounds right up my street and something that i really 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 want to get into and it is set in the markets of 18th century cairo thieves tricksters con artists and outcasts eke out a living swindling rich nobles and foreign invaders alike but alongside the new world the old stories linger tales of jinn and spirits and cities hidden among the swirling sands of the desert full of enchantment desire and riches where magic pours down every street hanging in the air like dust many wish their lives could be filled with wonder but not nari 
She she knows the trade she uses to get by, just tricks and sleights of hand. There's nothing magical about her. She only wishes want to one day leave Cairo, but as the saying goes, be careful what you wish for. Now, I've heard phenomenal things about this. I've heard so many good things about it. I'm here for anything that's set in Egypt, and I need to really start reading outside of books that are set in England and America. I really need to get better at doing especially urban fantasy books because they're either America or England um, and I or like I read fantasy books that are in completely made up worlds but this is urban fantasy because it's set in Egypt, it's set in Cairo but it has a magical element to it and I really need to make sure that I do that more and read more and um, that's definitely a goal of mine and I have such an interest in Egypt as a place. My grandmother who uh, unfortunately has passed away now used to go uh, all the time with my granddad and she'd come back and she'd tell me all of these stories about Egypt when I was a kid and um, she used to tell me like all of these stories about what Egypt was like and these places and all of these things that she visited and how one day I'd get to go and it was amazing and, and she used to tell me all of these stories so I love reading about books that are set in Egypt and I love reading about that because it gives me that like connection to her as well um so i really want to read this it sounds phenomenal i've heard nothing but good things about it and i can't wait um to delve into it properly then the fourth and final book in this little thing is not a book i bought recently because i bought those three books in the same day but i bought this one uh, last year start of this year end of last year and I have spoken about it before but I haven't got around to reading it yet and that is The Girl That Could Move Shit With Her Mind by Jackson Ford. Now this is actually a series now um, I saw the second book when I funnily enough when I was buying these and then I was thinking I really need to read that because I've had it on my shelf for fucking ages. <laughs> and this focuses on Tegan Frost who can do exactly that move shit with her mind. And the government obviously are like okay we need to use her for jobs and she needs to do stuff but all she wants to have is just a break from letting the government use her for her powers and her abilities and doing jobs for them. But then a dead body was found at the scene of her last mission and she now has 24 hours to clear her name and prove that she didn't do it. So it is everything from there. I really want to read this book. Apparently it's really good, really funny, really good exploration. I love anything to do with like telekinesis and like powers but that are put in kind of like a humorous and that kind of style way. So I am looking forward to this one as well. I'm going to read the first four chapters now. I'm going to do it as kind of like a little vloggy style. Um, and I'm going to read the first, the first four chapters. Not the first four chapters, the first chapters of all four books is what I meant to say. So let's go do that now. It's the next day, as you can tell, I look a little bit different. Um, so I thought I had time to film me reading the first chapter yesterday and I didn't. So I haven't read them, but I'm going to read them today. And like I said, I was going to do this as a vlog format anyway, so it's fine. Um, so I'm going to start with City of Brass. Um, I've heard so many good things about, oh my God. Chapter one of this book is 21 pages long, I think I counted. Um... So, it's a hefty chapter one, but I'm looking forward to starting it. We do love a book with a map. An immediate win for me. Okay, so I have read chapter one, I'm on chapter two. I really like this. This is a really good opening to a fantasy novel and I just want to keep reading. It's a long first chapter, which sometimes I like, sometimes I don't like, but I think in this case it works because it's enough of a build, like, you know, 20 pages, it's enough of a build for you to then think, oh my god, okay, what's happening and want to read more and like start to get to know these people. So I really like this. I think this is really good um, and sounds really good and I've heard so many good things about it. So this could be a good contender. I was worried that a fantasy novel wouldn't be the best because of like trying to focus and stuff and obviously now I'm not post-surgery so it could be completely different but I'm not finding this really hard to read you know how some fantasy books take you a bit of time to get into because it's a whole new world and you have to like sort everything out but this one I feel like it feels okay so 
I like this and I'm really excited to read more of it. I just want to read more of it now. Next, I think I'm going to break it up and go for a little bit of sci-fi-ish and go with the psychology of time travel. I think that's going to be my next first chapter. And then this first chapter is 14 pages. Long. This one I'm really excited for. We love women in science. We love women inventing time travel. We love all of this. So I'm really looking forward to starting this one as well. My hands are starting to hurt um, like my wrist. I'm going to put my splints on in a minute. Um, so I'm using my little comfy chair, like desk, pillow desk, which is really useful for when there's days where I'm in bed so I don't have to hold the book up. That's something which actually I don't talk about a lot is uh, sometimes my arms are so weak that I can't hold books, which is sad. So this little pillow comes in handy because all I have to do is rest my arm on the page that's open and I can read and it's wonderful. Okay, so I have gotten to chapter two, which is set in 2017, and obviously chapter one was set in the 60s the exact day was 1967 they've gone for the view of time travel that you can't travel back before the time machine's existence which is what i think if there's no parallel universes like if it was just our universe that's what i would think the first couple of pages i thought oh is this not like this isn't what i thought it was going to be but the more I read the chapter, the more I enjoyed it and I enjoy their take of time travel. I'm really intrigued as to what has actually happened with Barbara, like why the light, why she was drawn to the light. And obviously there's the effects of time travel and is that having an effect? Who knows? Um, but this is really cool. I do like the way that they've gone about doing this and I'm interested to see how 2017 and 2018 are going to link to 1967 and how it's all going to combine. So... Yes, I really like this. This is going to be so hard to decide which one to read first. Um, I'm going to go make some tea um, and put my splints on. on and then I think I'm going to go with Fall or Dodge in Hell. That's so heavy to hold. Um, I'm going to need help pouring the kettle, I think. Okay, so this first chapter is 24 pages. So another big one. just wanted to show you because, um, I mean, it's kind of relevant to books. But I prefer loose leaf tea. Mostly because also, like, I know tea bags are compostable, but um, you don't have to use them. But I bought this tea strainer, which is a book, and you put um, the loose leaf tea in the pages, and then it goes over your mug, like this. And I think it's really cool. And there you go. The tea is coming out, and it's c c flavoring. We have a tale of two cities. Oh, we love it. We love a literary pun. I have my tea. It's on a coaster on a book, which I don't usually do. But it's the best way for me to have it at the minute because I can't hold it and it needs to be next to me so I can pick it up and like stable myself. So there we go. This doesn't have a map, but this is very cool. Splints are on, ready to go. So I just finished the first chapter of Four or Dodge in Hell. I'm not, I didn't click with it as much as I did with um, City of Brass and Psychology of Time Travel. Not like, because it's massive and it's, there's a lot to take in. And I think that it is a book I'm going to like, but it's definitely a book which I know I'm really going to have to take my time with because there's a lot going on with it. The first chapter was like 25 pages and it was a lot of information and a lot of building. So I just don't have the immediate want to read the next chapter as much as I had with the other two. So I don't think this is one I'm going to read soon. It is one I do want to read because it's definitely something that I'm interested in. And it is like, I didn't not like it. It's not that I think I'm never going to read that. I just know that right now is not the time for me to start this book. And in order for me to actually love it and appreciate it, I'm going to have to start it at another time. So finally, we have the girl that can move shit with her mind. Okay. Oh, I think this is a short first chapter. Okay. Okay, so chapter one is literally two pages long for this book. Let's go in with this. And this book has a kind of map. It's an annotated map. We love a map and we love an annotated Like, oh, this is very cool. I like this a lot. Oh, 
Okay, so first chapter of the girl that can move shit with her mind is done. Like I said, it was only two pages, but those two pages were funny. It made me laugh. It makes me want to read more. It immediately gives me an insight into what Tegan like voice is like and what she's like as a person, which I think is really good. Like for it to be able to do that within two pages, I love that because I already kind of have a little feel for her. I really liked this one. This one because it made me laugh. And it's definitely the type of superpower story that I like. It's humorous. It's got that style to it but also that seriousness is that kind of like the Marvel films, you know what the Marvel films are like, like the humour that they have, but also they can do shit, you know? So yeah, I really love this, this, I think this one is going to be a book that I do like. I love the style of it already. I have decided to go for The Psychology of Time Travel. I mean, all of them in their own way were interesting and I'm definitely really intrigued with The City of Brass and The Girl That Can Move Shit With Her Mind and also for or dodge in hell it, although that is the one i'm least interested in continuing asap i think i'm going to take this one in because the city of brass and also the girl that can move shit with her mind are series and i don't think like i'm really really i'm reading them and i'm really liking them but i can tell there's going to be so much information that's then going to lead on to more books and one i'd have to like get them on my kindle because i won't be able to pop to the bookshop when i'm in hospital um and two like it's committing to a series when i don't know how well i'm going to be able to read and i'm going to want to read more but then i'm going to struggle and it's going to be a lot so i've ultimately decided to take this book into the hospital with me like i said i will take my kindle and i will take other books but i wanted to have one main book that was my main focus to take into the hospital with me and it is going to be this one um i just wanted that main book as something like that i could focus on reading that i could take in and read before surgery and that i have with me and is sort of that main thing so i have that focus but there's not loads and loads and loads of books there to like that i'm thinking oh my god i could be reading and, I, and i'm not if i'm not in the right mindset or i'm in a lot of pain to be reading if that makes any sense and i'm very excited to read more of this book i'm excited to read more of all of them um and city of brass is a series that as soon as i'm completely able to fully commit to a series and get back into it i'm on it with city of brass so yeah i liked this style of video there's a bunch of contemporary books that i want to read um so i might end up doing it like that and see which book i start with and do a similar kind of video but with contemporary books if you enjoyed it let me know if you guys liked this style of video and this try a chapter challenge i would love to know and like i said if you guys are new here then i make videos a couple of times a week about books and fandom things so if you want to stick around and join us feel free to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell and as usual all the links to all my other social medias and also my podcast are in the description down below thank you guys for watching i hope we're doing really 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 well and i will see you next time goodbye